Hello everybody, it is Anna. Today we are going to be reviewing another book called Night Shift by Stephen King. So this is one of his short story collections, one of his earliest ones, the earliest short story collection. I believe it was his third published or fourth published book, or yeah, you know, bound book of all time. And yeah, this is one of the earlier classic King books. There's about 20 different short stories in here, uh, amounting to about 500 pages overall. So it is a very short short story collection and it, it is a really good one actually I have a lot of varying feelings about the various stories in this collection you know some of them are some of the greatest King stories of all time in my opinion and some of them are just really dumb putting them at some of my worst Stephen King stories of all time I'm not usually the guy to read short stories I am reading Brandon Sanderson's Arcanium Unbounded right now so I do have a little bit of experience and I am getting into it quite a bit but this is one of the first short story collections of all time that I've ever read and so because of that I don't know exactly how to review this how to exactly compare them but I am gonna go ahead and make this review somewhat different to my normal review I'm gonna be going through every single short story in this book and then I'm going to be rating all of them explaining what they what I think is good about them and then by the end I'll be giving you my favorite recommendations and I'll also be putting in the general consensus of what is the best short story in this book what is the worst short story in the book so you can wait for that at the end you know if you really want to get some recommendations of some of the stories you want to read in this but not all of them go to the end go ahead grab that or you can just hear all of my thoughts about all of the stories that's gonna be great first up is Jerusalem's Lot now this book was an interesting little story for me it very much compares up to the Salem's Lot story it is it is the same town Jerusalem's Lot Salem's Lot so it is the same town however it does take place about 200 or 100 years earlier than the actual book and what I found about this was that it was an extremely confusing and a little bit convoluted story and I didn't like it too too much but I definitely could see how it people do like it because this is one of the sh few short stories I've read you know it's the first story in this entire book and so I don't know if that must have clouded my memory or something but it wasn't that great I really did like the dark side of it it did feel like horror and I did enjoy that quite a bit so I am gonna give this a two out of five stars it's fine it's nothing great but it does have some interesting classic King moments in it graveyard shift was the second story in this uh, collection and it is pretty interesting it's one of the more classic King tales you know it is that one about the rats in the basement I'm not gonna go into too much of a depth there but it is that one if you know what I'm talking about it is fairly classic it is a very short one it's one of those that I actually did enjoy I did like the plot I love I loved where it was going the characters in this were actually well defined you know in short stories that doesn't generally happen but in this one that worked out very very well it did hold me at the end of edge of my seat but there was just you know, it's a dark King story, but it didn't hit any of the interesting notes that I would have wished it to. The ending was very interesting, and I did like how he actually went for that ending. That was great, but there's nothing in the story that really captures you, like, you know, it's not it's not that great. It's good, though. I did enjoy it a little bit more than Jerusalem's Lot. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. If I was talking about how well written it was, it would be a 4 out of 5. I think it has everything in place. It just doesn't have that King heart that we usually love in the story. Then there's a story called Night Surf, which is the third story in this book, and it is a kind of prequel to the stand so it's not exactly yeah you can see it right up there uh, it's not its own story really there's not really that much plot and that's why I don't like it that much but it, it, it is very separate from the stand it is the same world same concept of the stand but it's a completely different like people you know it's a, it's a different situation going on slightly and I did enjoy it a little bit more because of course, I've read The Stand, and I really love The Stand. So, the concept in this was very interesting. The characters were very well defined. He had some very interesting, different characters in this. But again, there was no real plot to it. There was just a couple characters, their conversations, their feelings. Some small things went down, but nothing big enough for me to actually care. That's gonna be a 2 out of 5. I am the doorway. The fourth one, and the most forgettable, I, I can't actually remember what goes down in this. And it must have been because I read it so many, like, in different points. I stopped and I started again later between months of it. But I just didn't really like this one that much, and I, I guess that's why. It did have a very good concept to it. It was a very confusing concept, but a very good one, and it ended off in a very satisfying way. This one, I may not have loved it, but I definitely see that this could have been very good if I had read it decently. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a 3 out of 5. It does have a great plot and a very interesting interesting concept to it. The Mangler. Now this is where stuff really starts to get interesting. I think after this point we have some really great stories. The Mangler is one of those. I actually really enjoyed The Mangler. It is a story about, you know, it's a very classical King story. It is not one of those that you hear about a lot, but the way you read it, it feels like a very classical King story. It's one of those stories that has to be written by King. And 
it's really interesting because it has so many different points to it, very interesting details, and I love how he crammed that into a very generally short story. So that's why I really enjoyed the ending. The ending was okay, I didn't mind it too much, but the very concept and the plot itself, I think it went by very interesting. The plot was kind of meh, the concept itself, that was that was really fun. And it was a very suspenseful short story, so I'm gonna give this a 4 out of 5. Boogeyman wasn't so great, it was has a very interesting concept again, but it wasn't that great on its own. It, it wasn't played out very perfectly, but it, I did enjoy how the concept that wasn't so great played out fairly well. It's one of those classical kink settings in that this guy is sitting there talking to his counselor or therapist, and that is how the story is told. And I don't really like that that much because he's telling the story, he's saying, oh, I know you don't believe me, and that kind of just ruins the entire essence of it. It's like, you're not really there, you're just hearing about it. And then the twist at the end was kind of lame. This wasn't a very good story, it was fairly forgettable, but it did have some strong emotional moments and a very good character actor, so this one I have to give a 2 out of 5. Grey Matter is one of those classical King stories. Again, this is one that I think a couple of King fans must have heard of because it's very, I feel like it's very central to the entire Kingverse, I believe, uh, in, in accordance to Tommyknockers, but it is a very forgettable story. It has a very simple plot point, and what happens is that they're just trying to enter that plot point to see it, to, f to look at it, to kind of figure it out, to see if it's real, and that's the entire story. It's got a good like fun emotions kind of and there's kind of a progression of what kind of happened it's it's a very simple story and it didn't really have any interesting moments there is that one great king part of it that is in all books like in misery it was that lady i forget her name and you know in it it was the pennywise there's one central king object that you know is just so classical in this one it was really boring and i didn't like it that much the ending i actually liked it was a very good uh, let off wasn't great as a king, you know, it's not a generally good ending, but for king, it was pretty good. A, mm, I think it's a 3 out of 5 for me. Battleground was one of my least favorite stories in the entire thing. Uh, it was really dumb. Um, I think it was like a very, very short story. It had one plot point, and it was a very confusing plot point. The character itself had nothing to do with the real plot. The plot just occurred to this random character, and generally, I feel like that's an okay way to do it, but to make a really good story, you need to have a plot that is very central to the opposite of the character and it really conflicts in that way no in this story it is just a plot that's just out of place in a character that i didn't really care about and we had some very interesting details about the character and i thought okay we're gonna play on those details but it does not matter that details did not matter at all and so many little details that do not matter really boring just confuse you within the story and by and it's really confusing what even happens in the plot so i had to go to read the wikipedia page to understand what was going on and because of that i i have to rate this a one out of five very boring nothing interesting happens very confusing nothing about this is good has a lot of good details i guess if it had been a de decent story but the details don't add anything to it trucks is a very classical king story it is a it's that one movie that you know the movie maximum overdrive which was based on the king story trucks and it was also the movie was written and directed by stephen king so that's why it's very classical king story trucks but uh you know that movie absolutely bombed one of the least decent movies in the entire catalog of king movies you know so people know it but and i think people really like the story i couldn't stand the story it was a really dumb it didn't really have anything really fun about it you know there was a good concept but it didn't work with the plot the plot itself seemed very boring and didn't really work with the concept it was a very it was a lame it was really lame is what i'm trying to say the characters were kind of boring the concept and I, I just keep coming back to the concept concept might have been good okay but it was played on really really badly this is one of the stories that a lot of people love i couldn't stand it it was a really boring story i have to give this a one out of five sometimes they come back one of the worst titles in the thing, but it's actually one of the better stories. It's a fairly long one, and it is a very interesting way of doing it. Uh, the concept is really boring, but the execution was really good. And because of that, we have a very interesting character and a very d interesting plot that actually feels like a full story, like a full, complete story. And, and that's really great about it, because you don't often get that in short stories. Uh, it really worked well because of that. What I really loved about it was how the plot, you know, progressed perfectly. It was a very vast plot. It wasn't just small steps going towards the climax, vast steps, vast steps hitting up to like a vast climax. And you know, that really worked well for me. What I didn't like about this was that it missed some just like, it was great, it wasn't incredible. 
That's why I give it a 4 out of 5. Definitely recommend this for you if you want to read this. Strawberry Springs was one of those short stories that really captures you from the writing and from the aura or the atmosphere and you kind of get into it hoping that it's going to be really good. It's not really good, but it's, it's definitely decent. And I think I read this and I enjoyed it just because of the atmosphere and the story. We don't really know what's going on very well. It's not explained perfectly. But by the end, I, I this is one of the stories I had to look at the Wikipedia page. And I kind of figured it out, but I don't think it was foreshadowed properly. I don't think it was a great uh, execution of a great King story, but it had some great feelings to it and that's all I can say about this. It was a 3 out of 5 because it felt nice to read, really didn't have much substance. The Ledge. Now uh, we, we began getting into some decent King stories way back from uh, when, when we started The Mangler but I think this is where we come to like King's peak, like King's best stories. Yeah, right after this we get some of the best stories by him. Uh, and this is one of those stories that is really good, I think, is just not as vast as I would have hoped it to be. It's a very small scale story, and because of that, I would want to rate it less, but this is definitely what they're, it's going for. It's going for a small, contained story, and because of that, I think it has everything in place to be a great King story. It has a great character, great concept, great plot devices, great conflict. Everything about this is great. The ending even is really, really fun in this one. This is one of the better endings. So I'm very happy about this book. It does have a few plot points that are setups to the main plot that are very convoluted and don't make sense, but just look past those. It's still a really good one. I give it a four out of five. The Lawnmower Man was one of those stories. I just could not stop laughing at it. It's such an incredible, just so great concept. I love it so much. I'm not gonna spoil it. This is just one of those, it's not even that long. How long is Lawnmower's Nick? It's like 15 pages, literally. Just go pick up this book, read Lawnmower's Nick. It is just, oh wait, no, it, the Lawnmower Man. It's just incredibly funny. It's so dumb, it's so stupid, it's so great. I, I, that's what I love about it. It's such a bad, bad concept. But he, King does it. King works with it. It's so dumb. It's so great. He makes it great. The conflict itself is so weird. It's great. I love this one. Um, it, I don't, I think it was meant to be weird. So that's why I, I actually really enjoyed it. But again, it didn't have that great big stakes. And by the end, there was something that happened that was not foreshadowed at all. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a 4 out of 5. But it's just one of those that you just got to read. And it's so dumb that it's good. And it's so executed well that it's amazing. Quitters Inc. is my favorite short story of all time, I think. It's it's a, people don't really like this one. And people say, you know, it's a good one, it's generally good, but I've, I have never heard anyone say that this is one of the better King stories. And because of that, I was kind of not great about going into it. It's one of those that they put on the back, so I should have, you know, known about it. But as they went through it, I realized this is that one story that I could not stop reading. Like, I was going places and I just, I could not pull myself out of the story. It was so great. Such perfect plot points, such perfect conflict, just great everything. It's a great concept, great execution, great character. Everything about the story is so incredible. And I, what I love about it is it's such a common world thing. It's like a, it's like a, it's some, a something that could happen in real life. Although, you know, it, there's nothing, there's nothing supernatural. It's just a little bit of a very creepy thing that could have definitely happened in real life. And that is what gets it so many points. It's just so great because of that. It could happen to anyone. And it's so scary because it's so realistic. And it's such a smart idea, but so scary at the same time. Just brilliant. Easy 5 out of 5. Best story in the collection. I Know What You Need had the potential to be a really great story. And I think that it had a very great concept. Not great, but pretty good concept. And the execution was very, very well made. What I didn't like about this is that it didn't have enough you know, foreshadowing, enough weird stuff going on because it was a very odd story. And that's kind of the great part of the story. That is the, that is the point of the story itself. A bunch of small, odd things are happening. But then to actually get to the conflict, we need to be able to realize that weird, unexplainable stuff is happening and that's kind of how we get into the final conflict and i think that that is a big step the king missed he didn't create it so that it's a very unmistakable step i didn't like the backstory of that one dude you know it, I, you won't understand unless you actually read the story but there's a couple steps in here that i think he missed that would have made the story really really good and this has a great potential to be awesome so without that i have to give it a four out of five but it is a very interesting story to say the least Children of the Corn is a classical king story, one of the most classical ones, and it is has the greatest, greatest concept of anything in here, 
and it has a very good execution. And the thing is, I didn't personally enjoy this so much because it was a bit of a kind of shock from, you know, all these very fun, just chill stories, you know, and then this one goes into straight up nuts. This one's crazy. So I, I hopped into this one and kind of like shocked me a little bit, but it is a really, really good story. The execution, the world building, I think the world building itself is really great. It starts off fairly, fairly badly. I think it has a very slow start, but it does get into some great stories later on. I have to give this guy a five out of five. The last rung on the ladder, that is a story that, uh, it did make me shed one tear, okay? It did make me shed one tear. It was a very, very sad story, and I really connected to it deeply, uh, because I do have a sibling, and this is about siblings. So it's a very, very sad story, and it, you know, it really, it really hurts me, but, um, I don't think it has a great plot to it. It has a great plot, but I think the point of the story was to connect up the sibling uh, relationship. I don't think that was built up great. The plot itself was fun, but it was very secondary to the main overarching plot, which was the relationship between the two siblings. And that was you know, unfortunate because of that. I think it, it had some great, like all the moments for it to be heartfelt were there, but I think it added too much of other stuff, too little of the actual, and it, that other stuff could have been used towards building up the re sibling relationship. I don't think that was done to the peak of King's ability, but it was a very sad, heartfelt story. And I give this a four out of five. The Man Who Loves Flowers is a nine page short story that was really, really boring. It has a very bleak setting and a very uninteresting setting. So that kind of threw me off because it wasn't really fun from the get go. It's a very chill story. Nothing was happening at all. And then by the end, we do have something that was happening and it was very completely unforeshadowed. It was like a big twist, like, oh, okay, sure, let's do that then. And it's really, I, I find it really dumb. It, it could have been decent, I guess, if there had been any kind of foreshadowing, but there was nothing for us to think about. Like, this, it, there's nothing like, oh, that makes sense, you know? It, it was just a straight up twist. Oh, okay, we're doing this now. And it's just kind of dumb, and I didn't really like it. I give this a two out of five. One for the Road is a very forgettable king story. It is a, uh, it's another one about Jerusalem's lot or Salem's lot, but it, this one takes place after the book, after the novel. So, what is ugh, this book is just the story is just such a forgettable one because it has very good plot points, it has very good everything, but it's just a story that doesn't matter really at all. It doesn't feel like it matters at all. It doesn't change much in the world. Like one guy, it's not like one guy changes, but it's not like a drastic. It is a drastic change, but it's not a character change, and it's just a generally. It's like a. It's like a. You know, if somebody came out with an axe and killed someone, like it's very similar to that. Like something happens. But nothing really important to us happens. The characters are really dumb. Nothing about the story is really that great. It is just fun to just be back in the Salem's Lot world. Uh, but there's nothing too much about it. I give this a two out of five. The Woman in the Room. Now that is a very weird short story because I feel like it is King's Life. It is a very, it's a story very similar to King's Life. And because of that, I really want to rate it highly because now I know what he's trying to do, but I can't confirm that it's about King's Life. I didn't read the Wikipedia page for that one, but it's a very story. It's a story told in a very odd way. It has many parallels to King's Life, like his adopted brother, uh, things like that, that just, and his mother that make things very, very weird. And the ending, I really enjoyed the plot for what it was, but I don't feel like it was a very great King story. It was a decent story on its own, but it didn't capture too much more than that, but it did have a little bit of an emotional resonance with me. I do want to give this a 3 out of 5, because it is a fun, decent story, it just doesn't have, and if it is a very good story if you know that it is a connection to King's own life, but if you don't know that, if you don't care about that really, it's not that great. It's, a, it's an okay story, so I do give that a 3 out of 5 for being decent, but just being decent in a very smart way, in a too smart of a way. So, you know, that, that's all I gotta do for it. So that is the general gist of this. I wanna give this entire book a actually a four out of five because some of the stories were just so good that it bumps up the average, honestly. The, the forgettable ones you forget about easily. So that's why I do wanna give it a four out of five. And now I'm gonna list out uh, some of my favorite short stories. If you just wanna jump into it, according to my tastes, uh, go ahead and do that, definitely. I'm just gonna go ahead and list them now. Uh, first of all, we have a really good one by The Mangler. Uh, that one's a really fun one. Then we have one called Sometimes They Come Back. Really great. The Ledge is a really, really fun one. I actually enjoyed that very, very much. The Lawnmower Man, just for how dumb 
it is. Just read it. Uh, Quitters Inc. is wonderful. My favorite. Not many people's favorite. I Know What You Need is great. Children of the Corn, you can't go without it. The Last Rung on the Ladder. Tell me what you guys think about that one because that's a very heartfelt one, but I, I feel like it was missing something. And then we go ahead to... Actually, yeah, The Woman in the Room. That was a very interesting one now that you know that it is you know about King's life and now I'm gonna talk about just the main ones that people know about that people generally like a lot which are gonna be Jerusalem's Lot for just how weird it is I didn't really catch on to that very much but it's okay we also have trucks which is I didn't like that at all really lame story in my opinion but people really like it I don't know why either the ledge is a very common one uh, Quitters Inc. is not that well received but it is well known by the King community Lawnmower Man is also one of those uh, Children of the Corn, for sure. The most important story in this entire book. You have to go with that one, for sure. And then, uh, I guess it's One for the Road and The Woman in the Room. Those are the ones that are more, not critically acclaimed, but just more well-loved by the community. So definitely go and look at that. Sorry for this video being so long, but I want to go into everything. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, please hit that like button down below. I would really, really appreciate it. I would really appreciate it if you subscribed for more King stuff. Uh, in the future, I am gonna be reading the uh, Stormlight Archive, I'm gonna be finishing that, and then I'm gonna jump into about four King books in a row. So that's gonna be really fun for me. And I hope you guys enjoy that if you enjoy King. So uh, please slap a like and subscribe if you can, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.